All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Lieutenant J.J. John Hu, one of the admissions officers here at the Coast Guard Academy. I was a 2018 grad of the Academy myself, so not too long ago. Um, upon graduation, I went up to the Coast Guard Credit Mackinac up in uh, northern Michigan, so Sheboygan, Michigan, about as pretty much about as close to Canada as you can get uh, without actually touching the border. Um, and we did ice breaking up there. That's one of the really cool missions that the Coast Guard does. Um, next slide, please. So one of the really uh, interesting things about the Coast Guard, how we're uh, separate and different and unique from the other academies, uh, is that if you look at Air Force, Navy, uh, and uh, Army, they're actually all under the Department of Defense. Uh, the Coast Guard, in contrast, were actually under the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, prior to 9-11, the Coast Guard was actually under the Department of Transportation. Uh, but after 9-11, with the heightened uh, response to uh, global terrorism, uh, Congress actually shifted us over to Homeland Security, and that's, that's where we remain today. Um, so where uh, the, the, the core of our service is really uh, humanitarian. Uh, we're about saving lives. And so and that's one of probably the one of the main factors that draws a lot of people into our service uh, is that we're we're humanitarian focused. And so obviously we're there to protect the homeland um, and, and guard the coast it is, as it is in our name. Uh, so our mission is to protect the public and the environment and our economic interests. Um, and so uh, the Coast Guard is what the smallest of all the uh, service branches. Um, so to give you an idea of the, about the size of the Coast Guard, if you think about the NYPD, uh, New York Police Department, uh, the NYPD has about 55,000 people total. Um, the Coast Guard has 45,000 uh, active duty uh, people in, in, the, in the organization, in the service. Uh, so that kind of gives you, hopefully that gives you an idea how small the Coast Guard is. And uh, you'll, you'll get a little bit of a feel as to how small it is, just how small it is um, at the academy. Our academy is only about 1,000 cadets. Our, our student body is about 1,000, give or take. Um, so you'll know every single one, uh, every one of your classmates, you'll know the vast majority of the people at, at, at the academy. So kind of that small family uh, environment is uh, what a lot of people like. Next slide, please. Yeah, so, so as I uh, mentioned, we'll talk about the academy a little bit. Um, uh, our student body, like I said, is about a thousand. Uh, those thousand cadets are broken up into eight different companies, Alpha through Hotel. Um, so you get assigned a company your freshman year, um, and then you get assigned a new company uh, st at the start of your sophomore year, and that's going to be the company you remain in uh, for your last three years there. Uh, so select uh, selection rate, uh, this past year was a 12 point, about 12 and a half, 13% uh, uh, selection rate. So uh, just as with all the other service academies, a very uh, selective and very selective process. Uh, throughout, your, um, throughout your four years there, just as similar to the rest of the academies, everything is covered. Um, it'll cover the school will cover about three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars worth of your education. So everything is covered for. Um, on top of that, you also get a monthly stipend of about a thousand, just over a thousand dollars. So that's one of the great things that um, attending uh, not just the Coast Guard Academy but any service academy for that matter is that you start. It teaches you those uh, financial management skills from a young age because most college students who are going to you know a normal college not only are they um, racking up debt, uh, they're not learning how to manage their money so that, you know, by the time they graduate college, they have this load of debt that they need to pay off um, and they still haven't necessarily have any real world um, experience with money management. So that's one of the great things uh, at the Academy. Um, your second class year, you actually get a $36,000 loan uh, with 0.75% interest. Uh, so that's essentially, that's just free money. Here you go. Um, and then most people will end up buying a car there. You're allowed a car uh, on base your first class year, your senior year there. Uh, so upon graduation, everyone is guaranteed a job. And so the great thing about the Coast Guards is because we're such a small service, um, there's, there's no lack of demand for um, leadership opportunities. So about 85% of all graduates will go directly to a cutter. Uh, so they're going to be going on underway platforms, just as similar to I did. I went on an icebreaker uh, my first tour. And the great thing about that is that you get to practice your leadership skills immediately. You're going to get assigned a division. Uh, depending on the size of your cutter, between five and 10 people that you're going to be managing. Um, so that's one of the great things uh, about being a junior officer in the Coast Guard is that you have those leadership opportunities early on in your career. Um, you have those uh, flight school options as well, about 13, between 13 and 15% of each graduating class will go directly to flight school. Um, and I know it might sound a little uh, contrary, but you actually get more flying time in the Coast Guard um, as opposed to the other, other services. Because uh, you're, you're constantly flying. Every single week you're flying to, to maintain your qualifications, uh, to keep up your license, uh, and you're doing drills all the time. So uh, because it's such a, a, such a small service, our aviation community isn't as big. And so you, the amount of time that you actually get on the stake is actually more. Um, the, our service retention rate, so just as with any other service academy, you have that five years of mandatory service after graduation. 
Um, so that 85% alludes to the fact that over 85% of all graduates from the Coast Guard Academy will actually stay in service after their uh, mandatory payback time. Uh, so that says a lot about our service satisfaction. Uh, for the most part, people are very happy uh, in the Coast Guard. Um, and there's, there's a few theories as to why the service satisfaction is so high. Um, I, personal, I personally think it's so high because our service is so small. And so um, the Coast Guard it does a really good job of taking care of its people. Um, so, you know, let's say I were to get, uh, you, you were to graduate, do your first tour, you were to get married, and you obviously don't want to, you know, stay uh, afloat um, to stay away from your family for a few months at a time. So the Coast Guard does a really good job of uh, making sure that it's uh, the, the people in the service are taken care of. Um, and there's also post-grad opportunities as well. Between 75 and 80% of all graduates from the academy uh, will go on to grad school as well, uh, which the Coast Guard will also pay for. Uh, so the grad school program is pretty awesome. You essentially, you're just two years living as a, as a, as a civilian uh, with, with the Coast Guard paying for your education, for your master's or your PhD. Next slide, please. Um, so the three, we kind of focus on three different pillars here, which I'm gonna go through briefly. Um, first one is leadership. Uh, so obviously the, the, the purpose of the four years at the academy is to ultimately develop you into a fleet uh, fleet ready commissioned officer uh, so the curriculum not just the academic curriculum but even on, on and off the field is really there to prepare you uh, to ultimately be an officer and be uh, ready to manage um, the, your division when you graduate uh, so it's really there to equip you uh, for uh, for being a well-prepared junior officer uh, your second class year your fall semester of your second class year so your junior year fall semester uh, there's a, we have an exchange program, uh, so you can have the opportunity to study a semester at a different service academy and vice versa too. We get a lot of um, exchange students from other academies who come and study for that semester here at Coast Guard. Uh, and I, I always like to make this uh, fun plug, interesting fact is that every single semester, the one, um, the one feedback we always get from the other cadets and midshipmen from the other service academies is that the food at the Coast Guard is by far the best. Uh, so that's I like to make that plug and I can personally um, I can personally testify to that. The food here is, is really awesome. Our cooks are phenomenal, not just at here at the academy, but even after graduation too. I was blown away about how, just how good the food is. Um, next slide, please. Uh, our, the ne our next pillar is academics. Uh, so um, compared to the other services, uh, we don't have as many majors to offer. We're primarily a STEM institution, just as with all the other service academies. Uh, we have nine total majors uh, offered. Um, as you can see, our our class are because of our core size is so small like i said about a thousand cadets our faculty to student ratio is a one to seven um, so that's a really great thing about the coast guard academy in the sense that you get a you get that intimate um, classroom uh, learning environment uh, so each class size is you know, depending on your major depending on um, your year is probably going to be ranging between 10 to 15. so it's a very small class size uh, and you get that like i said a lot of that one-on-one -on -one attention from the instructors a lot of us our instructors are active duty um, so they really get to incorporate their professional maritime experience and, and operational uh, um, operational experience into the classroom so that's one of the great uh, leadership development um, aspects that, that the academy does a really great job of um, and all the instructors are very helpful too if you ever need help academically they're more than welcome to set up a time with you outside of classroom hours to make sure that you fully understand everything next slide uh, in terms of athletics we're primarily division three um, as opposed to uh, Air Force, Navy, and, and Army, um, or Division Three. So um, one of the great things about Division Three is that if you're kind of on the borderline, you're not like super, super good. You know, you may you may end up going to one of the other service academies, and you, you might be sitting out because it's 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 just D1, and D1 is obviously a very, a very a significantly higher level than Division Three. And so uh, we're primarily uh, primarily a Division Three. We do have a few uh, D1 sports, as you can see on the right hand uh, right hand side right hand column. Um, our rifle coach at one point was actually a, the coach for a U.S. Olympic team. So we certainly have some uh, high caliber coaches in, in our athletic program. Uh, we have three seasons, the fall, winter and spring. Uh, and for two out of those three seasons, you are required to do some sort of uh, physical activity, whether that's a varsity sport or a club sport. Next slide, please. Um, so your summers here, your summers here are very interesting. They, they uh, We give you a plethora of di different experiences and operational experience to help prepare you to be a junior officer. Uh, so I'm not gonna go through each of these individual summers, but um, each, each of the summers is unique in a sense that it gives you a unique experience and uh, uh, certain leadership, uh, certain leadership skills, skill set that, that, that they're gonna give you. 
Um, so uh, probably the highlight, uh, a lot of people say the second class, your junior summer is the most fun. Um, you get to be cadre, you get to train the incoming class of freshmen, you get to train the swabs. And really that's, that's when you really uh, learn a lot, not just about yourself, but a, a lot of, you learn a lot about your classmates and stuff. And it's always interesting to see um, oftentimes the most quiet and reserved people tend to be the people who uh, uh, kind of let loose their inner, their inner monster, I like to call it. Um, so that's, that's a really great time. Uh, and then your first class summer, you, you get, you have opportunities for internships. Um, I personally, I got picked up for an internship. I, the Coast Guard literally paid me to go on a cruise for two weeks. It was, it was almost ridiculous. Uh, it was a great experience. Uh, we went to Bermuda um, and the Bahamas and as well as Jamaica as well. So um, so some really amazing internship opportunities as well. And not just in the, not just in the continental US, a lot, a lot of my classmates went to Guam, you know, the Philippines, uh, uh, Bahrain in the Middle East, um, obviously Hawaii and Alaska are common destinations as well. Uh, so yeah, definitely some great opportunities during the summers. Next slide. Uh, yeah, typical day as a cadet, just um, kind of similar to the previous slide uh, with the Merchant Marine Academy, Revely is at six. Uh, you have breakfast. Breakfast and lunch are always uh, family style, so you're eating with members of your company and your division. And then uh, academic period is typically from 0800 in the morning to 1600 or 4 p.m. in the afternoon, uh, followed by sports period. And then the rest of the time is uh, basically your, your time. So I would say the biggest thing, not just at Coast Guard, any academy, is the biggest thing is time management. Those are the people who tend to do best at the academies. Um, are people who manage their time well. You can If you have a free slot in between one of your classes and you uh, maybe work ahead or finish your homework from from the uh, for the day. Then um, those are going to be the people who uh, succeed. Uh, next slide, please. So in terms of the application process, our application typically opens July fifteenth. Uh, you can either apply to um, early action or regular decision. Uh, so both pools are uh, early action is non-binding, meaning if you get in, you do not have to. You're not binded uh, to. You're not obligated to accept your appointment. Um, I will note the main, the main difference between this service academy and the rest is that we do not require congressional nomination. And so the entire process is merit-based. We look at all your accomplishments and your leadership potential, your test scores, uh, your transcripts. And so we, we, we're, since we are primarily a STEM institution, we're looking that you have those core STEM classes covered by the time you finish your high school career. Um, so and that's calculus, chemistry, and physics. So if you have those three covered, um, you're putting yourself in, in, a, in a pretty good position to uh, be competitive for an appointment. Next slide. I think, yep, that's it. And then my contact information, I'll put my contact information uh, in the chat here and uh, thanks everyone for your attention.